Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. And this is my review of Full Metal Alchemist, a Japanese movie from 2017 that is based on the manga series of the same name. Now, recently on this channel I have reviewed a few live action adaptations from Japan that I think were pretty good, if not legitimately good. But of course, Japan has also produced some garbage in this arena, so I think it would be helpful to take an example of a recent failure, in my opinion, and talk about why it does not work. And one of those examples is Full Metal Alchemist, which actually provides a template for what not to do when making a blockbuster-style action film. Now, full disclosure, I have seen the anime series from the early 2000s, not the more recent one, but the one from the early 2000s, and I enjoyed it. You know, I thought it was a good anime, but I had some problems with it, and I'm not a, I'm not a gigantic fan of it. My big criticisms of the live-action version here from 2017 is from a, the perspective of someone who simply wants a fun action movie, not a die-hard fan of the anime or manga. I have not read the manga yet. Now, I will borrow and paraphrase a handy plot synopsis from Wikipedia. Edward and his younger brother, Alphonse, live in a rural town with their mother while self-learning alchemy at a young age. When the brothers commit the taboo act of human transmutation to resurrect their mother after she dies of illness, it backfires, and they suffer the consequences via the law of equivalent exchange. Ed loses his left leg, Al is dragged into the gate of truth. Ed then sacrifices his right arm to save his brother's soul and bind it to a suit of armor via a blood seal, later replacing his missing limbs with prosthetics. Ed later receives an invitation to join the military so he can research a means of restoring Al's body. And after becoming a state alchemist with the title Full Metal Alchemist, Ed begins his quest to find the legendary Philosopher's Stone, which could repair their bodies. <clears throat> okay, you know you're in trouble <laughs> with a movie near the beginning. So this one especially... Because these two flaws immediately pop you right in the face. They smack you right in the face. Unearned melodrama. Underwhelming performances. In regard to the former, this movie takes itself so freaking seriously. This movie is cinema, okay? But the script is too incompetent to justify all of the melodrama in this movie. So, for example, <clears throat> the mother dies within the opening two minutes of this film. Why even bother to create a dramatic moment that is that unjustified? I mean, how is, how is anyone supposed to connect with these characters or their relationship in less than two minutes? And why should we feel anything when the mother dies? It's totally unjustified. Later on, there's a huge dramatic moment. Huge dramatic moment involving a scientist dude and his talking chimera monster. It's supposed to be, like, incredibly tragic, but I was just rolling my eyes the whole time. You know, they literally spent no more than a few minutes setting up that event, and it had no impact. And it, but it's trying to be so dramatic and so tragic. Like, like this is really going for the jugular, this movie, in terms of emotion. And uh, if, you want, if you want to make a movie that serious, you better earn it with good script writing, or else things get embarrassing. And they get embarrassing in Full Metal Alchemist. Then, less than ten minutes after that, our protagonist is yet again screaming in emotional agony. It's just like, it's brutal to watch. It's just brutal. There are way too many overly serious moments in this film that are completely unjustified by the lackluster script. That is a major problem with this movie. Now, in regard to the underwhelming performances that I mentioned, our lead actor is front and center in that criticism. I did not like Ryuzuke Yamada in this movie. He played everything very bluntly, and he lacked nuance in his performance. He just was a very flat lead actor to follow throughout an entire film. But it's not like he was given much to work with, so I don't really know how much of it is his fault. You know what I mean? But uh, his performance was not good, man. The little kids were also pretty bad. I mean, they're not in the film very much, but I have to point this out. And it might sound mean to criticize little kids for their acting, but we've seen plenty of legitimately impressive child performances in Japanese movies. You know, anything directed by Hirokazu Kurita, basically, has little kids in it. They have good to excellent performances. So, it's not an excuse that the kids are young. You know what I mean? But I have to point out, 
The kids in Full Metal Alchemist are not good. <laughs> They're not. Even the quirky female sidekick, played by Subasa Honda, feels off in this. And I usually like that character, that style of character in Japanese live-action films. Even if the film's terrible, I'm usually going to like the quirky female sidekick. But that doesn't even work that well here. And I previously saw this actress in a movie called Night's Tightrope. And she was very good in that movie, so I know she can act. But uh, virtually nothing works in this Full Metal, Metal Alchemist live-action film. So we have a crap script that fails miserably at crafting drama. We have underwhelming performances, both of which are pretty big flaws. But we haven't even come to the worst thing about this movie. Now near the beginning, there's a goofy battle of wizardry involving our protagonist. and He's chasing some dude to get his ring. Special effects are nothing special. But uh, it is somewhat creative in how it incorporates stone monsters and stuff like that. I thought the opening 15 minutes of this movie were watchable fluff. They were watchable fluff. At least something was happening, right? This action scene ends near about the 15 minute mark. 15 minutes into the film. The next action scene. I'm not talking about someone shooting a bullet and killing someone. You know what I mean? Or a brief scuffle between the brothers. I'm talking about a legitimate action sequence. Does not occur until almost 95 minutes later. You could leave Full Metal Alchemist, you, you could leave it playing on your TV, leave the room after the 15 minute mark, and go watch In the Line of Duty 4 from 1989, an action-packed extravaganza, in its entirety, and then come back to catch what you missed in Full Metal Alchemist 95 minutes later, and you wouldn't have missed much of anything in terms of action. That is completely unacceptable for an allegedly crowd-pleasing, blockbuster-style action movie. It's completely unacceptable. You can't do that, okay? I was fidgeting in my seat for practically the entire runtime of Full Metal Alchemist, uh, waiting for just something interesting or fun to happen. Just when you think something exciting is about to happen, it doesn't. It's about as low-octane of an actioner as you can get. And it's not easy to sit through this movie, man. It's it, the almost complete lack of action for almost 95 minutes is a big reason why. Now, I have no problems with movies that have crappy scripts, you know, action movies with crap scripts, so long as we have enough action to keep me entertained and interested in what's going on. I mean, Full Metal Alchemist commits the sin of having a 2 an hour and 14 minute runtime, an incredibly serious tone, a badly written script, and no action for 90 plus minutes. 90 consecutive minutes. That's a recipe for disaster. And this movie is just so hard to sit through. Oh. Um, the only things I really liked about it were some of the uh, location shots and character designs. You know, I do think that Al looked pretty solid in this. You know, For a walking suit of armor, the guy looked pretty realistic. I liked his effects. Um, I also enjoyed those humanoid monsters that arrived later on. And that's about it, man. This movie stinks. <laughs> it stinks. It's available on Netflix streaming if you want to suffer through it. We'll see you next time.